Hallelujah. Well, it's uh, great to uh, great to be with you uh, again, and uh, this is uh, Pleasure and Priority Part Two, and you'll be able to uh, read this uh, teaching on my partner letter, um, November two thousand and eleven, which you can access from andrewshreve.org. Hallelujah. Let us just pray, and, and then we'll get into this uh, teaching. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. For the word of God. We thank you, Lord, that your word is the truth. And Lord, that we pray right now for the anointing of your spirit to help us to have a better understanding of your word and to come into revelation knowledge, Lord, so that your, we can live according to your word and we can bring glory to your kingdom. We can bring people into your kingdom. We can help develop the understanding of your people. And so, Lord, more people will, will go to heaven and less people will go to hell. We pray this. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So we were looking about in this uh, teaching in part one, we were looking at the the, priori the priority between uh, the pleasures of this world. I'm not talking about sinful pleasures. I'm talking about the good pleasures like good food and nice accommodation and nice cars and, and uh, lots of money, things like that, versus the, the priority of serving God and walking with God. And maybe even uh, suffering for the kingdom of God. In other words, if you're, going to, if you're going to preach the gospel to the nations, you're going to have to go to people that are sick, people that are poor, people that maybe you know, aren't so pleasant to be around in environments, polluted environments. The poor people are in the polluted areas. And so you need to go, we need to go to these polluted areas and these sick people, these per people are going to persecute you possibly, these people that aren't so nice to be around, and we have to preach to them and teach them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so there's a suffering involved in taking the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the nations. And we saw that Jesus said to Paul the Apostle, I will show you how much you will suffer for my name's sake. And so we need to have an understanding of these things. And so in this teaching, I want to look at the last two paragraphs of the written teaching, which you can view on the website uh, on the teaching of priority and pleasure. So first of all, let's read now. Jesus, however, is aware of our physical needs and our desire for comfort or pleasure from the finer things life has to offer. In other words, God made us, Jesus made us to enjoy good food, to enjoy nice clothes, to enjoy nice accommodation, to enjoy the finer things life has to offer or the better things life has to offer. So he's very aware that we like these things. And he's not a killjoy in that he doesn't want us never to have or enjoy these things in life. It's just the issue here is not whether we enjoy the things or not. The issue is the priority of our life. And are we prepared to put the Lord's priorities above our own priorities? Are we prepared to be like a soldier and endure hardship for other people so they can get blessed and it's not that the Lord's going to totally remove all blessing from our lives it's just that we might suffer for a time frame and then we may come back into a greater blessing at a later time so there are certain promises and guarantees from God for the person who chooses to be the Lord's slave and to place the Lord's priorities above their own they will receive reward from God in this life. Also, not to mention eternal reward. And personally, I think the eternal reward that we get from, from possible suffering in this world will far outweigh the things that we, that we might give up in this world. In other words, it's far better to give up a few things in this life for other people's benefit. And the eternal reward will be far greater than, than what you could ever imagine. Now, in Matthew 6.33... Jesus promises food and clothes to those who will seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, of course, we need to accurately seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And if you look at other videos that I've written, you'll see that to do that means to plant the word of God into your heart, to meditate his word, to grow his word so that his word will produce the fruit of what it says. That's what it means to seek first the kingdom. And his righteousness, of course, is similar in that it's planting his seed in your heart so that you are, uh, have faith in Jesus Christ, so you are righteous through faith. In Matthew 6, 29 and 30, 
Jesus says that gives the example of being clothed better than the lilies of the field or clothed he says he clothes the lilies of the field who are clothed better than Solomon King Solomon in all his glory and we'll, and how much more will he clothe us so he's saying not that you're going to be poorly clothed but you're going to be well clothed okay and in Matthew 10 29 to 30 Jesus promises that those who have forsaken house and lands for his sake in the gospel will receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and lands well a hundredfold of houses and lands certainly implies bountiful prosperity so Jesus has dealt with food and clothes and now houses and lands and in all these things he's talking about things in terms of abundance and so if you seek God with all your heart if you follow the Lord's instructions he's going to look after you the Lord looks after his own God is not God provided he, he came up with a whole concept of abundance and blessing and prosperity and so he's going to cause that to happen in your life even in John 10 10 it says the thief comes to steal kill and destroy but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly Jesus himself when he was on earth did not lack or live in poverty but rather he had an abundance if you look at his life his clothes were were seamless they were expensive clothes he he rode on a donkey that had never been ridden that's expensive transportation um, he, he he had a leftover when he fed the 5,000 he showed them where to catch more fish Jesus did not live in poverty and his followers will not live in poverty either so it is evident the Lord blesses his people and a slave of the Lord could become more empowered with wealth to enjoy the honorable and pleasurable the honorable pleasures of this world than the person who has chosen to make mammon or money their master so in other words the issue here is priority is your priority your own pursuit of pleasure and wealth or is your priority the Lord and his kingdom and what I'm saying is that yes there, there will be a certain level of suffering if you choose the Lord but there's enough evidence in scripture and enough promises to know that God's going to look after you and possibly the pleasure you have uh, in the legitimate pursuit of God's kingdom the pleasures you will get and the blessing you will get may far outweigh what you could have got if you if you tried to do it your own way and just pursue your own selfishness so in this article we have reasoned that a true Christian is a person who has willingly placed themselves under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in other words to become a Christian you have faith in the blood of Jesus to take away your sin you believe that Jesus rose from the dead so that he's alive in heaven and you you, you confess him as Lord you say Jesus come into my heart be the Lord of my life I surrender my life to, to you in other words a Christian is someone who has deferred the priority of their life choices to God and are willing to forsake opportunities to make wealth therefore possibly reducing their capacity for pleasure as the Lord directs their energy and resources to the advancing of his kingdom in fact a Christian is prepared to experience tiresome work persecution rejection and association with people who may be sick and dirty and, and smelly and in, in polluted and uncomfortable environments for the noble achievement of the building of the Lord's eternal kingdom. Okay, so this what a Christian is, someone who, who who is prepared to get into the dirty areas of life, the poor people, the sick people, the, the areas where there, there is they're under the power of Satan, get into that area and help those people and preach the gospel to them, teach the gospel to them, so they can get set free. And there's a suffering in that. That you also might get rejected, persecuted. You know, like Paul was whipped five times. So a Christian is prepared to do that under the Lord's command, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, okay, to build the Lord's kingdom. But in that, Scripture assures us that the Lord will reward with financial provision those who accurately seek first His kingdom. Those who have faith in the Word of God, they will receive financial blessing. In fact, it may be the case 
that those who place their priorities in, in deference to the Lord, deferring to the Lord, may end up being more highly empowered to experience the noble pleasures of this world than those whose primary focus is pursuit of wealth and its associated benefits and pleasures. Hallelujah. So let us now pray and just ask God's blessing upon this teaching. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the word of God and we thank you for this teaching. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us in our hearts to know that your will, that the building of your kingdom is a higher priority than our pursuit of personal pleasure and wealth. Even the suffering we might undergo in that working and building of your kingdom is a small, not comparable to the eternal reward, not comparable to how we're liberating people. And we know, Lord, that even in that suffering, our whole life may experience more blessing, more financial prosperity, more pleasure than the people that pursue money as their God. And so, Lord, help us to have this understanding and to submit our lives to your cause and to your kingdom. And we thank you, Lord, for the anointing and blessing which will come as a result of that in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.